So today is audiobook recording day, which is ridiculously exciting and also kind of nervous. But first of all, can we just take a moment to appreciate how crazy pretty Oxford is? Like, I don't usually come this way a lot, but I've been working in the library this morning doing a bit of editing for tomorrow for my Apollo 50 video, which you guys will have seen ages ago. But anyway, and uh, now I'm walking towards uh, Cowley Roadway and yeah, going to this studio to record my book, which is crazy that they want me to do it, that you guys want me to do it. And I've never been more excited for something <laughs> in my entire life. I feel like I'm gonna feel like Tom Hanks recording like the voice for Woody or something in this studio with a microphone. And can you tell I'm excited? <laughs> oh God, I've just had a thought. What if I'm reading it and I find a mistake? Oh, worst nightmare, it's already gone to the publishers. Two hours later. But getting humans to explore these possibly habitable worlds. Words? That says words. No, that's the first mistake. <gasps> Quick, so I'm the outside, outside on the phone. <gasps> no, okay, can we make a big note of that, that it says words, not worlds? Absolutely. Oh my dear, I knew I'd find a mistake. I said to myself this morning that was going to happen. Don't worry. Don't no. Worry. <laughs> Typo. Another thing. I don't know how it's going to work with the amount of hand gestures I do when I'm speaking. Like, you must have noticed this. I talk with my hands all the time. So I don't know whether that's going to come across when I actually record the book or not. Like if they're gonna tell me off, for like making too much noise next to the mic. I guess we'll find out. Later. Not exactly the best method for finding Earth 2.0. Another part, oh, sorry, I caught the thing there. Yeah, Did you catch that? Yeah, yeah. I told you though, didn't I? Mm -hmm. you get into it? I'm just flinging my hand around like I don't care. <laughs> the other thing that they've told me is that I have to slow down when I talk. So apparently for audiobooks, you know, people need time to process what you've said. The same is probably true for YouTube videos, but my natural talking style is very fast and it's what sounds like me and what I'm most comfortable with when I speak. So when I film for YouTube, I, I just get really comfortable and relaxed and I just chat away. And so, you know, that's what style comes out. But for the audiobook, I'm gonna have to be like really careful to slow down my speech. And I'm really worried that it's not gonna sound like me if that's the case, but hopefully I'll be able to strike a happy medium of slow so people can understand, but also chatty so that it still sounds like it's coming from me. Space, 10 things you should know, written and read by Dr. Becky Smethurst. So I know that it should be like space, but it's not gonna be that. It's just gonna be me saying space normal, like a normal person, but I, I feel so. like I wanna go space. <laughs> I think that would be better. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, is it preface or preface? preface I never know. Preface, preface, whatever, it yeah, don't yeah, really matter, does it? No, I don't. It's an either or, isn't it? Really? Right, okay. I'm just used to you working with actors. Right, actors. actors. <laughs> I'm northern, though. So. Uh, <laughs> if we linger when we reach black holes, that's because they are where my heart truly lies. My own scientific jigsaw puzzle, which I attempt while sat at my desk in the astrophysics. Astrophysics? Can't even say my own. It up there. <sighs> There you natural. Wee. <laughs> that was brilliant. Well done. Years so of reading what? Harry Potter to my sister. Well, there you go. <laughs> Ooh. Don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you just jumped out of my skin. Just to wake you up because I thought you were dropping off. <laughs> okay, so, so. so the universe as a whole is destined to become more random with the inet in. Uh, how do, I've never actually pronounced that word out loud in, before. Inexorable. Inexorable. Inexorable, yeah. It's like I said, albeit, the other day, and someone was like, that's not how you pronounce albeit, it. Yeah. Albeit, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I want it to be conversational, but also followable. Yes, absolutely. So, that's not a word, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. The editors make me sound good, really. <laughs> That'd be me, probably. <laughs> the text editors, the audio editors, you're just all doing a brill job. <laughs> And as a single human being, we are just one infinite infinitesimal. Again, that's one word I've never said out loud. I always just write it in papers. I know. <laughs> infinitesimal. That sounds good. A scale that even now our brains struggle to comprehend. Mm -hmm. My belly just grumbled at the end of that. Did that pick that up? I got that belly grumble. <laughs> yeah, I think I could probably get rid of it, but we'll go just that last sentence. Yeah, sure. Never has there been another result which has had a bigger impact on astronomy. 
Did you hear that, Belly Grumble? I just hug a cushion. Yeah. <laughs> Perhaps the universe has been doing this for eternity, cycling through big bangs and big crunches with the odd. Oh, another belly grumble. Sorry. <laughs> I've seen you to eat some food. It's nearly lunchtime, obviously. Interesting. There was. Well, I'll start that again. Got too excited. It is exciting stuff, though. It's so exciting. It is. Look at this. It's great. But the giant jet of radio emission burped up by the supermassive black hole is over 10 million light years young. I did it again. Light years young. Well, it could be young. <laughs> I'll make it into a new unit. Young. Light years young. Chapter four. Just because you haven't seen it doesn't mean it doesn't exist and so bend space in exactly the same way as normal matter. That exactly was a bit Liverpudly, and I'm going to do that again. Yeah, okay. Now, the amount that the light is bent... Sorry, I'll start that again. I'm sort of preempting where the sentence is going before I've fine. even read the sentence. Yeah, okay. <laughs> now, at first, you might think a lack of magnetic field will only affect navigation on Mars, as compasses won't work without a north pole... Pole? What's a pole? <laughs> These planet-wide dust storms... I'm going to start that again. Sorry. These planet white dust. I keep saying white. It's because I've been watching this Australian DIY channel and they're like, paint everything white, white on white. Yeah. And then the white on white. I wonder, Rita, if you were given the chance to go today, would you? Yes. <laughs> I've convinced you. <laughs> At the time of the explosion, the astronauts, Jim Lovell, Fred Hayes, and Jack Swigert, we're over 45 hours into their 60-hour journey to the moon. Sorry to be a pain. I think it's Jack Swaggart. I might, I might be wrong. I think it's Swigert. You've got Swigert. I I'm... I've always thought Swaggart, but I'll give it you. I'll give it you. Just come someone Google it quick, but I'm yeah. pretty sure we triple-checked that in the edit. Like, the proofers will have checked it as well. It's definitely spelt with an I. I mean... It is spelt with an I, but I... Oh, how you pronounce it, you I mean you might be Swaggart. Swaggart, yeah. What are we doing, playing a clip from Apollo yeah. 13? Yeah. Now look, Jack Swaggart has been out of the loop for weeks. Jack Swagger. Yeah, Swaggart. it's very American, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Jack Swagger. <laughs> no, that's because I, I don't, I don't, I just like, yeah, you know, it, it's what's he called? Uh, Kevin Bacon. That's right. Yeah, you played him in Apollo 13. It's just Kevin you? Bacon in my head. By like Kevin Bacon. Oh god, this is the diff this is the difficult beginning of chapter that I've been dreading reading. I forgot about this. Right. Okay. Come on. We can do it. We can do it. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm so happy that they got in there. Using some fairly simple orbital mechanics, we can then relate this velocity shift. Sorry, Beth, is that mathematics? Orbital mathematics? Yeah, what did I say? Mechanics. Huh. That's okay. That's so okay. weird. You know when you read something, you're like, I, I until you said it was maths, I was, I was seeing the word as mechanics. I know. Chapter 8. Aliens probably exist? Is that alright in that tone? It's like a fun chapter title. So. Yeah, I think that's great. Probably. Yeah, that's good. So that rules out all the stars above two-ish times the mass of the sun, as they'll run out of fuel far too quickly for life to develop. If you had a star that was... Oh, sorry, I just need to scratch my head and I realise that could have come out on the audio. <laughs> just a little... Scratch your head. If I assume my thumbnail is roughly circular and about one and a half centimetres across, I could... F oh, I've not even looked at this number. How many? How big is this number? A million? Is it trillion? Million? No, it's beyond trillion. trillion. That would oh be trillion. Goodness. It's 50,000 trillion, I think. No, million, billion, trillion. 50, yeah, 50,000 yeah, trillion. Yeah. So perhaps that brings us to about one in a quadrillion. Like Brian Cox eat your heart out with these numbers. This is brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> if you did just throw that many black holes together that quickly, you'd end up with a huge swarm of black holes Orbiting, I'm sorry, I've forgotten about the end of page. Well, okay, was not prepared okay. for that then, it just, I was having so much fun, I just forgot about turning pages. Chapter 10. We don't know... Oh, I'm gonna do that again. I went a bit... Then, <laughs> didn't like that. Chapter 10. We don't know more than we do know. That meant that the experts had a full sample that they could go away and study. And none of this would have been discovered. Discovered? It's been discoverded. It's been taken out of a cupboard. <laughs> Digital detectors invented to replace photographic plates, now employed in mobile devices. Mobile, mobiles. They boil mo's. 
The digital detectors invented. I'm still smiling. Sorry, give me a second. <laughs> well done, Becky. Cool. That was fun. Huh? That was really fun. Great fun. Gonna... We're done. <laughs> it's done. Oh <laughs> my universe! I can't believe it's done already. Like, we took like four hours for me to read the whole thing, and it was so just amazing to like not have to think about like the words that I had to say at the same time as I was saying them you know they were just in front of me there and I just had to read them and I could just get really into like the meaning of the words if that makes sense and it was so enjoyable the guys at the studio made it so much fun and I can't believe that now like I have to wait like two months for you guys to hear like what I've just done in there whereas for you like you only have to wait a day like the book is out tomorrow or like now, Thursday the 5th of September, could already be out by the time that you're watching this. So all the links to order the Kindle book, the hardback, the various different audiobooks from Audible and iStore and Google and all of that stuff are down in the description below. And so the next time you see me, I will be a published author of a public science book. <laughs> Most of all, I hope that you enjoy it. And I hope you enjoy reading or listening to it, however you consume books. And if you do, like, let me know in the comments below or like write a review if you want as well. That would be like super helpful. I'm heading back to the office, back to the day job. I've got a plot that I need to have made for like the past week that I haven't done yet. So I need to stop putting it off. But for now, I will see you next week with a brand new video about something in space.